So do you feel like God can't use you? Jack Hibb shares how God took him from humble beginnings to a ministry that's helping others walk in their purpose. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, the Bible says despise not small beginnings. So no matter where your life began, God has a plan and purpose for you bigger than anything you could ever imagine. And no one knows this better than today's guest. So you want to stay tuned. But first joining me around the table is April Simons. Hey there. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy, but you use that word tide in, in the Living Bible. Psalm 56.9 yeah. says that uh, the very day we pray, the tide of the battle turns. Yes, yeah. yes. So we just got to so keep good. praying. That's keep great. moving and keep praying. If you hear a snicker on the table, it's because when I turn my chair, it's making it's a It's so loud. Y'all need to this thing. Where is I mean, the W? You know what Dad would do? Dad would get some yeah, it's W40. It's not a cow WD40. WD40. He would CD40. That's right. That's right. Kendrick. Kelly Dean. We just are real you here know, at the table. I had that chair on Monday. <laughs> and I said, someone needs to put some WD-40. And the guest was talking. I was like, wah. I'm trying to be super still. Real life, real talk here yeah. at table So talk. Rachel Lamb-Brown, we just tell everything, don't we? We, we tell it we, all. Yeah. So just, you know, grab your cup of coffee. Join us at the yeah, table. Get you your hot tea. never know what you're going to hear, especially I've today. got my hot tea right here. Get it. Rebecca so lamb Wise. You're the one that I heard snicker, by the way. <laughs> well, it's the lowest loudest grunt. It's like, I wonder, do you think the people at home can hear it? I don't know. Let's just be quiet for a second and see if we can. Yeah. I think they'll hear it. This sounds like okay. a sad, pathetic shofar like blow. Whale. Now, it's <laughs> like a shofar. A sad That's shofar. That's what it is, a sad <laughs> Sydney Murdoch. I was going to say something so, so spiritual <laughs> and, and enforceful. <laughs> and then we, I brought the level down. Okay. All I will right. say this. If they will stay tuned, the guest that we have today mm -hmm. is going to bring so much positive insight that we do not hear on the media that I think is really going to give people some hope. Yes. We have a freedom fighter on our yes. show today. We do, right. we do. Well, he has been a staunch champion of liberty and biblical values, and he's here to share how God opened the door to a bigger destiny in his life. Please welcome Pastor Jack Hibbs. Thank you. Welcome. How do you like that music? It's that great good? music. Yeah. It's Just great music. Welcome yeah. back to the table. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's always good to have our California pastor here yes. in Texas. I'm honored. Well, he's been fighting for truth and freedom in the state of California and touching lives through his ministry, but that was not the destiny he saw for himself. Yet, God would take his life in a direction he never expected. Now, for people who don't know, you pastor a church mm -hmm. in California. Tell us about that great Southern church. Southern California, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. And um, God's blessed us. It started out as a home Bible study wow. from Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, where Chuck Smith used to pastor. Yeah. yeah. And um, I had my career in biomedical engineering at a company called Baxter. And so we started this home Bible study just to meet neighbors, honestly. Yeah. And, and of in, course, Jesus Revolution movie, that yeah. would be Chuck Smith that was That's exactly correct. played by... Oh. Um, Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer, yeah. You never planned on it. How did no. that happen? Like, you started the Bible study, and then all of a sudden, you became yeah, a pastor? Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we studied, almost. We, we started that study. It just kept growing, and then the people wanted to go to Sundays, so I was telling Pastor Chuck, you need to send a pastor out because this is what's happening. It's out of control. Wow. And he just kept saying, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll find somebody. The Lord's in control. And believe it or not, one day I went back to complain to him again. <laughs> and um, he just put his hand on my shoulder and said, you know, the Lord, the Lord bless what's going on in Chino Hills. So he got up and he walked out of his office. I, I, I thought he was going to come back. He, he went home. <laughs> and his secretary said, he's gone. I think you should leave now. And so I, I went back to work. <laughs> And then, uh, what, two weeks later, I get an ordination document oh, presented goodness. to me and all of that. And it's like, what, what's going on here? Aww. And so those Sundays just kept exploding. So, yeah, we have like, I don't know, anywhere from 14,000 adults on a oh, Sunday. Incredible. And that's, that's been 33 God. years ago. Was the transition awesome. hard? Were you split? I, when I quit my job, because yeah. I love science, and yeah. so... 
when I quit my job, I actually, I can admit this on, on the show, I just cried all the way home be, on my last day of my, of my secular job mm -hmm. because God had given me so much favor at that company. Mm -hmm. So let's go wow. back a little bit because um, your story, you look at you and you're like, oh, the guy was just born in this perfect home, perfect oh, gosh, environment. No. <laughs> it's not perfect. true. So tell us about that. No, my, um, my mom had made it over here with my dad. My dad married my mom in Hawaii. She was born and raised in Hawaii. He was there in the Marine Corps and then brought her uh, here to San Diego, or to California and San Diego. And so my mom was uh, very poor. She was raised in a Catholic orphanage in downtown Honolulu. And so she didn't know anything. She barely spoke what we would recognize as English. She spoke pidgin English. Wow. And so uh, they had, an, I had an older sister and an older brother. And my dad said, okay, that's it, we're done. And so what happens, my mom gets pregnant. My dad is now heading to Alaska, but he says, when I get back in a year, I don't want a third child in this home. Do whatever you need to do. But no. So he wanted her to abort you. Abort. Yeah, so she was scared. She felt very um, intimidated because she couldn't communicate well with others. If you've ever heard pigeon English, it's pretty crazy. And so um, she put my brother and my sister to bed. And this was December 24th, 1957. Wow. Christmas Eve. And then she attempted an abortion and it failed, she was hospitalized. <gasps> and on January 15th, I uh, had a chance to come into this world. And so I didn't know anything. Same any birthday as you. Wow. Are you serious? I knew I liked you. <laughs> oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, January it's a holiday, 15th. Yeah. you know that. Yes. So Marlene of course, when, I'm sure when you were born, she loved you and... Oh yeah. Were you born prematurely because of what she did, or was that around the time right before you, you know, were supposed I to do not, I do. I do believe it was. I'm guessing now. I think it was the due date time. I'm, I, th I think because they put her in the hospital, she stayed there until then. Okay. But I know that she had she had injured herself um, in that attempt, but I didn't know any of that until I was home. Uh, I was a junior in high school, and I was home during uh, football for Hell Week. You have two practices a day, right? Uh -huh. And I was in between that and I was just eating and, and I heard my mom telling a neighbor woman next door all of the details. That's the first time I'd ever heard that. So you overheard it. Yeah. Like, no that's one, how you found yeah. out. Yeah, and then, wow. I, then I went to my mom. She told me the whole story. So what happened when your dad came back in the third Yeah, I was child. three months old. He came back, I was three months old. So was he unhappy when he came back and saw that you were... That, that she had delivered a baby boy? I mean, I, I can only assume so, because again, I was, I was three months old, but I don't know what that strain did to their relationship. And I remember the night I got saved. I got saved during the, the Jesus movement in 1977, and- You were 19. I was 19 years old, and my dad and I, we'd never had a conversation. I mean, never had, never had wow. one. Wow. And I remember being so nervous trying to tell my dad that I had just accepted Christ, and he said, I finally got out the gospel because I stuttered really bad. And he f waits and hears this, and then he says, wait a minute, you, are you telling me that God sent his son into the world to die for our sins? So his own son died for us? I go, that's right, no, I, thought he, I thought he got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to accept Christ now? Um, and he just said, if God did that, he's a fool. Wow. And I thought his chair was gonna blow up. I thought lightning was gonna strike. Just the years went on, and I just dove into Jesus. I mean, just everything I could do, studied everything, went to classes, did everything, just because of the word was awesome. Gosh, I believe it was like 2013. I may be off about the date, but um, he calls and he says, Jackson, uh, I need you to tell me about Jesus. And I'm thinking, what in the world is going on here? And how long had you, you'd been in ministry now? Yeah, we had the church, yeah, everything, the, it's full. Had he come to church? He would visit a few okay. times. So he says... Tell me about... He says, tell me about Jesus. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Turns out, long story very short, he had cancer. Doctor told me he had cancer. My dad was born and raised Marine. We were raised in a Marine Corps home. You don't whine, complain about anything. And he wasn't, but he, he, he just said, I need to know about Jesus. I'm actually going through emotions now thinking, do I want to give him Jesus here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. And just out of just sheer obedience, well, Dad, it all starts in Genesis 1. And I literally took him through the Bible two, over a two-hour long phone call. Wow. wow. And I made it as difficult. Honestly, I'm, t I'm just telling you, I made it as difficult for him as possible to accept Christ. <laughs> and he said, okay, I'm ready to repent of my sins. Wow. Let's do this. Wow. wow. He accepted the Lord. He died eight days later. Man. Wow. My mom, my mom has cancer. She she accepts Christ, dies four weeks later. 
Wow. My sister has cancer, and she winds up suffering and dying seven years later. All of them accepted Christ because of cancer. What, wow. my, what our evangelism couldn't achieve, <laughs> cancer was the most effective evangelism in my wow. family, wow. hands down. Wow. So don't give up. Yeah. If people are suffering, let God have his way. So how did you deal with forgiving your dad for all of it's that? See, it's seeing them in Christ. It's seeing them now shrouded and wrapped in the salvation of Christ. Yeah. That when, and we all know this scripture. There's neither male nor female, rich or poor, bond or free. All are one in Christ. Mm. Well, for me, that's, that explains my family. It's like, oh my gosh, Lord, you're so amazing mm. that you did this. And so I'm going to see my dad. I'll see my mom. I'll see my sister. Wow. It's amazing. So now you had two siblings. Is yeah. the brother still alive? My brother loves the Lord. He lives in Utah and he's loving God. And That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. That is so amazing. Actually, I'm thinking about growing up in that kind of household. That's what I'm thinking about. It kind of prepared you. It did. To fight. Hmm. Oh, I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> um, the setbacks and stuttering really bad. Back in those days, bullying was like a cool thing to do. So I was the brunt of it. And so I, you were stuttering because you have... I, no oh my goodness, the Lord that? completely healed me of my tongue oh. Wow! in 1983, in, like that. Wow, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. How old were When you? I asked my wife yeah. to marry me, I said, Lisa, will you, 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 oh. me, 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 Oh, my goodness. Marry me, and she just goes, you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it was, wow. it was tough. Even our vows in our wedding, the pastor knew, you, you won't, you know, you won't have to repeat, don't worry. Because I couldn't, I couldn't get through anything. Yeah. And so... I remember just saying, we're at an afterglow. You guys remember the term afterglow? Yeah. We're at an afterglow meeting at Calvary Costa Mesa, waiting upon the Lord, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation. And I remember just saying in my head, Lord, if you heal my tongue, I am, I'm freaking out, God. I have so much of your word inside of me, and I can't say a thing about it. I'm thrilled about it. If you might touch my tongue, that would be awesome. As soon as I said that in my head, there was somebody in this group that said, you know, I think there's someone here <laughs> asking God to touch your tongue. Wow. <laughs> and God's word to you is, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I turned to Lisa and I go, that was for, 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 oh, for me. <laughs> and wow. she goes, well, okay. Awesome. You, know, you know, what is she going to do with that? It's like, well, okay. so, And wow. uh, about... That was about two years later. Uh, there was a group that would go out witnessing in Lido Island, if you know where that is, Newport Beach. And so they're we all witnessing. That, we know that nice little place over there, yeah, Newport Beach. The, yeah. It's kind of shabby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I would just pray while they would go witness. And I saw this lady sitting on one of the walkway overpasses over the waterway. And I just, I didn't hear God's voice, but I, I almost felt like him pull me toward her. And I went up to her and I said, excuse me, but would you mind if I talked to you about Jesus? And she said, not at all. So I gave her the gospel. We prayed. She didn't accept the Lord, but I didn't stutter Woo. once. Wow. So I went looking for them. My <laughs> wife was in that group. She was, they're out sharing. I'm I went, ready for this. I went, <laughs> I went looking okay. for them and I said, you won't believe what happened. This is what just happened. And Lisa said, and you're not stuttering now at all oh, either amazing. and wow. so, so since cool. then wow. poor lisa i mean i haven't i haven't shut up since. <laughs> I'm, I'm making up for lust no when god touched your tongue that That's, is what i hear yeah. yeah that is that he's anointed your tongue yeah. yes. that it pulls people yeah. in because i've watched you before and mm -hmm. i'm like there's something about the tenor of his voice yeah. pulls me i want to listen mm. That's so um yeah. would you just take a moment awesome. um jack and look in the camera i believe there are people right now you may not need your tongue to be touched, you may. I don't know. This is kind of unusual, but unusual things happen here at the table. But um, they're just dealing with something and believing God. And I uh, just believe God wants to touch some people right now. It's going to be like a supernatural thing, and they're not even going to understand it, but it's going to be God showing up in a way that is going to change your trajectory for the rest of your life. Would you just do that? Yeah, I just want to encourage you, believe it or not, the things that have been the worst things in your life, Jesus takes those very things that you think are absolutely not only against you, but they've chained you down to a life. Maybe you've almost predestined yourself that this is how it's going to be. And 
happily, God doesn't care about your past because he has overcome that past. But here's what he does with your past. He uses it. So if whatever it is that you've gone, it could, it, it could have been trafficking. It could have been uh, abusive relationship. It could have been whatever. Whatever has set you back, it's Jesus that takes those things yes. and he completely turns them around yes. to the point where I can honestly say those setbacks in life, I would not give them up for anything. And he wants to do that in your life. And you might say, not, not me, Pastor Jack, not me, because I live this kind of a life. Well, to whom is forgiven much? That person loves him much. So there's nothing that you could have done, nor there, there's nothing that could have been done to you that sets you outside God's incredible grace and his ability to truly transform your life and to use those things. Would you mind leading us in a prayer? We can repeat after you, but this is really an opportunity for you. You've heard Jack's story. Many of you can relate to it. And you think, well, you know, if God can do that for him, maybe he can do that for me. And uh, we want to give you that opportunity to pray. And uh, if you'll just lead us, Pastor yeah, Jack. Absolutely. So, Father, we pray right now for those that are viewing, no matter where they're at in the world, every single one of these viewers have an issue of life, maybe many multiple issues of life, and the hidden joy, they don't see it yet, but if they would just right now say, Lord, if you're out there, if you're really real, will you reveal yourself to me in my pain, in my hurt? And... Lord, reveal yourself to them the way that you do that. Far be it from us to tell you, Lord, what to do. You're amazing and you're sovereign and you love each and every one of those that are hearing this right now, that Jesus died on the cross for them too. And he rose again from the dead for them too. And Lord, that you gave them life in this world for a plan. They as well have the hope of eternal life waiting for them. Friend, if you just take that offer that he extends to you right now, I know you don't understand it, but ask him to show himself to you, and he's faithful. And we pray that you'd receive Christ as Lord and Savior. He'll wash you free of guilt, wash you free of pain, and he'll take away those things by renewing you and strengthening you by those things that have been redeemed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 And could we just say a little prayer? Just repeat after me. Say, Jesus. 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 Forgive me. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Today. 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 I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Thank you. Thank you. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. I surrender, I surrender. All, all to you today. To you today. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Is it really that simple? Yeah, it's that simple because uh, what, that, what those simple words are representing is a world of emotion and a world of experience. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's simple. But on the inside, it's extremely so complex that only the God of creation can figure that out. That's a good point. So what is a, a story you can share with me, like of those early beginnings of where you saw God move supernaturally in somebody's life uh, that had a story of just brokenness where God turned all that around? Yeah, I will be, br I will be vague in this intentionally. So there was a particular woman at our church who wanted to get involved. She didn't see her place in being used. She didn't seem to fit in. It turns out that it was later communicated to me through my wife, Lisa, that uh, she had grown up in an extremely sexually abusive home. I mean, bizarre. The brothers, father, uncles, the unthinkable. And God had given her salvation. She, she had experienced Jesus, but she was wondering, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to use this to God's glory? She wound up starting a ministry that still goes on to this day at church where it's very, very, what's the word, clandestine, covert. It's very quiet for their own protection. And that is for those who have experienced severe trauma like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this woman's life who... For her, there's no reason to live. Mm. Now she has all the reason to live because she sees the healing power taking place. Like in her, now it's happening in others. Those are the things that as a pastor, uh, you, can't, you can't put money on that. You can't, yeah. you can't, if somebody says, well, I don't believe it, it doesn't rattle you because yeah. we know what's true. We've yeah. seen this happen. And um, yeah, I mean, he, if he didn't transform lives, mm -hmm. starting with myself, um, I'd be back at my other career. Yeah. I'd be back doing something, but I can't. It's encouraging to think with stories like that, that God can take our greatest pain yeah. and elevate it to our greatest purpose. Absolutely. That we're never too far gone or too far broken yeah. to be used by him. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And those are just perfect stories and examples of how he takes broken people and uses them for his glory. He loves it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to circle back around. I, I really keep sensing this, the whole forgiveness aspect. Can you unpack that a little mm -hmm. bit more? Because I feel like there are people watching yep. that you are stuck. Talk about that. I know you have a lot to say about yeah. that. So we have somehow grown up in our world to think that we hold the keys to forgiveness. And if you hurt me, the last thing I'm going to do on earth is to forgive you. Because I'm not going to, I am not going to stoop down to that level and mm -hmm. forgive you. I'm going to have you be unforgiven in my life and let you suffer through that. The funny thing about that is it's a complete lie from Satan. Yeah, right. It's crystal clear that God has given us the ability to forgive others in Christ or through Christ. So Jesus said it this way, I have forgiven you, go forgive others. Yes. So here's the amazing thing about forgiveness when the scripture says if someone has sinned against you, go to them. Don't wait it out. Don't get all bitter. Mm -hmm. Don't shut your, mm -hmm. you know, your curtains or drive around the block. <laughs> go to them. Because here's the reason why. If someone sins against you, there is a power now that you've allowed them to have in your unforgiveness of them. In other words, God has called us to forgive so that we can go free. Yes. Yeah. Well, what if, they, what if they don't accept my forgiveness? Oh, he made that very clear. Even if they don't, because you did it, you're still free. Yes. See, if you withhold forgiveness to those who hurt you, yeah. they're still controlling you. Yeah. It's true. If you, so true. through Christ, because I don't think we have the human capacity to do that, but Lord, you forgave me. I put you on the cross. So Lord, I have now the mandate from you to forgive this person that hurt me. So I can no longer have them control me. I'm clean with you. I've obeyed you. Yeah. And then, here's the awesome thing then I can start loving them mm -hmm. when I didn't even like them. Yes. Right. So it's true. really amazing. So freedom extended sets us free mm -hmm. if they accept it or not. Right. Yeah. We are no longer held captive by that. So then what about the people that you can't have that conversation with them? Like they are not going to hear it or maybe they're not even here anymore. Maybe they, or they passed. May be, or they may be dead. Yeah. yeah, right. They may be passed and they're holding on to this because we all know unforgiveness does more damage to yourself. How can that yeah. person move forward yeah. in finding forgiveness even though there's not a reconciliation that can take place? Yeah, let's say there's no other options. Number one, everyone who's involved in that particular situation you can't reach them or they're all gone. Mm -hmm. Then you can go to God and say, God, here I am. You know all things. You know the timing of all things. I do not control time. You do. And I now, if they were here, I'd issue forgiveness to them. The God of the universe knows this. Yes. So that's the number one easy go-to. You go to him because he knows. Yeah. Yes. All right? right? And so It's almost this, like it's released in the spirit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're not able to like have a face-to-face, -face, but yeah. before God, you're still doing it. Exactly. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your cares before yes. him mm -hmm. because he cares for you. You would do that thing. You would say, Lord, if I could today, I'd make reconciliation with them. But they're no longer with us, with me. And so I'm going to put that here. And he, he will do, he'll or, take care of it. Or they won't, they, they won't, if they won't, won't allow that's me number in their two. presence. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Number two is if they won't, if they will not allow it, write it out and send it to them. If that's still, what if that doesn't work? Then, and this is important, everybody, please. There's an old law, biblical law, in the area of repentance and forgiveness, and that is let the circle of the confession be within the circle of the sin. In other words, if I sinned against you, I should go to you yeah. and or you should come to me. But if you go to Facebook or your friends and tell people about it hmm. and then come to me, now I've sinned and now you've sinned. Yeah. So you've, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure. So you let Good. the circle of the confession be within the circle of the sin. So those who are involved, they know about that dynamic. There might be one, might be three. You keep that circle small, but you go to them and say, look, I can't, I can't tell my dad this to his face. He's gone. But you kids knew what happened or you knew what went on. Mm. And I want you guys to know I'm a Christian now. I follow Jesus. And I want you guys to hear, please, what I would have said to him. Wow. And this is it. Mm. And you say it to them. Why? Because they have knowledge of it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not perfect knowledge, like maybe you do. But they know that something was wrong. Yeah. Tell them. Was yeah. it hard for you to forgive your mom when you found out what she did? Oh, gosh, no. 
I wasn't. No, first of all, I was a, a junior in high school, yeah. which it bounces right off your head. Yeah. None of it mattered to me until the night I got saved, I went home. It was June 20th, 1977. It's a Monday night. I went home that night from a message that Greg Laurie had preached. If you know who Greg Laurie yeah. is, mm -hmm. I sat there and I heard him give the gospel. Uh, and I went home that night and then... Of course, this is God moving. He reminded me of what my mom had told me when I was a, a junior in high school. And then it was like, oh my gosh, God, you are absolutely amazing. Yeah. And so for that moment on, you know, I just, I just haven't looked back. Yeah. What do you do when God tells you to go ask for forgiveness, but you really didn't do anything, but they feel like you did? I go. You just go. I have to yeah. go. I, I, have you I, ever had to do that? Yeah. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> it's awful, but you know yeah. what? But here's, it's awful, but watch this. You sound like you're speaking from he's, experience. Listen, he's, lo he's lovingly tough. So if he brings that up to me, I'm going to go obey him in that really quick. Because trust me, um, if you're going to study the Bible to prepare a sermon that comes from the Holy Spirit, oh. I don't download sermons. I don't get other people's sermons. I have to get it from him. If, if I'm not right with him, he just won't talk. I mean, he's not speaking to me. And so I'll... Or he'll stutter and you can't understand oh what he's saying. Oh, my gosh. Saying. <laughs> but even if it's with Lisa, I have to make up. If it's with somebody across town, if it's with a staff member, if it's whatever, I have to. And it, I, you have to keep your heart I, pure. Yeah. Yes, I have to. Yeah. And that person may view it as, oh, how sweet and kind. What they don't understand is, you, you don't get it. God's not talking to me unless we set this thing straight. So and so I have to hear from God mm. lest I perish. So let's set this straight. <laughs> let's get this fixed. Yeah. And, um, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to win every... Right. Argument. Yeah. We can just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. We don't have to come out on top. True. So knows. true. So true. Well, we are out of time, but I want you to remember that no matter what you've been through or where your life began, God has an incredible plan and purpose for your life. And I do love Jeremiah 29, 11, because he knows the plans that he has for you to give you a future and a hope. And he wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. And he wants to use you to touch countless lives, no matter what has happened to you. He wants to take those broken places, just like you talked about. He wants to take your pain and he wants to put some purpose to it. And you can help people in a way that others can't. So just remember that, and it starts with you surrendering your heart and your life to Jesus. That's where it all starts. If you're watching today, you want God to heal those broken places, to give you boldness or to reveal his plan for your life. That's why that toll-free number's on the screen. We have amazing prayer partners that are standing by. We'd love to pray with you. You don't have to give us any information about yourself. We just want to be a blessing to you. I do want to thank Jack for joining us. For more on his ministry, you can visit him online at jackhibbs.com. And uh, if you prayed that prayer and invited Jesus in, please uh, call and let us know. We'd also love to send you a free book entitled, Now What? I really do believe that God is calling people home. It's no accident that you're watching today. He has a specific plan and purpose for your life, and he loves you so much. It all starts with that prayer. Well, let us know how today's Table Talk has touched your life. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. I want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Jack. Will you come thank back? You. We of always course. love having you. Of course. You're such a blessing. Yes. Did we enjoy this later? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So yes. good. So good. Kind. I know you did as well. Hey, I'm excited about all that God has for you. Be encouraged today. Bye-bye for today.